Hi, and welcome to episode 47, January 5th, 2018. Transform JSON in Logic Apps. So welcome to this episode, uh, the first one in 2018. So uh, best wishes to everyone who's watching this and I hope for a wonderful and prosperous and healthy 2018. So in this episode, we're gonna talk about the transform um, capability of JSON in Logic Apps using something that's called Liquid. So we're gonna talk about that um, in this episode. In the community corner, I would like to point out of two uh, blog posts, um, by one done by Tone van Houten, how to use the Liquid templates in Logic Apps, and another one, how you can uh, use the Liquid connector within the Logic Apps where you can do JSON to JSON, JSON to text, XML to JSON, or XML to text. And that's done by Sumit Kumar, uh, which is a member of the product pro integration uh, group of, of Microsoft, the, the, the product group. So he's done one on the MSDN blogs. So it's 218 and I'd like to discuss a little bit or look back in, in 217 uh, when you know this middleware Friday sh episode started. So Ken started out at the beginning of 217 of, of pushing out these uh, excellent episodes and he evolved me early on uh, to do some of the demos. And later you know, after the summer, he kind of said, hey, do you want collaborate to collaborate with me and you know do these shows every alternating week? So that's um, you know, when we start doing this now together uh, since uh, September 2017. So we talked about uh, various topics, um, including uh, API management, um, some of the capability there, including uh, versioning and stuff. We talked definitely about Logic App, the uh, if then this else uh, type of capability that Microsoft offers. It's more than a year old now, it's mature. It's got tons of capabilities and features and it uh, keeps evolving. And something we talk about today as well uh, with regards to, uh, to the mapping capability inside Logic Apps. We talked about function, uh, function proxies, something that Ken talked about early on uh, in, in 2017. We had some feature shows uh, around Integrate London in the US. Um, we did some stuff around cognitive services. Um, uh, so one of Ken's favorite type of topics was you know, doing stuff with the bot framework and language understanding. I've done some stuff around AI with regards to face recognition or OCA capabilities. And um, since Mike, uh, since Ken joined Microsoft, uh, he talked also a lot about Microsoft Flow since he's in that product group. So that's kind of what we've done in, in 2017. Um, we've done about 46 uh, episodes. So there's about 6,500 views, so it's kind of appreciated. So it's in, uh, in average, it's uh, over 100 views, uh, we believe, or think, and hope per episode. Maybe it differs a bit, but yeah, definitely see some good traction there. So uh, again, thanks for watching if you do. And now let's go into our topic, which is this new advanced capability of Liquid, which is called Liquid. And this capability is based on open source. So it's a, you can find it on Shopify. So this is kind of an expression type of language. It's just XSLT type, which you can apply on JSON uh, if you want to do more JSON to JSON mapping, for instance. And this was announced uh, by um, John Fancy during the Integrate US and uh, in November last year at um, in Microsoft Rain on the campus. So he talked about it, he introduced it, and now you can kind of use it. So the template, it's a kind of a template language. You can find it, um, like I said, you know, in this URL you can find here, and you can do types of stuff you can, you might be familiar with, with regards to uh, when you did XSLT inside um, this talk. So you can do looping, conditional variables, Lots of stuff you can do. Um, it doesn't have any graphical representation, as in with the distal mapper. Um, it's more kind of you know hands-on, um, where you have to build this type of, of um, a template with a language, similar to something you do with XSLT. So it's liquid. What do you need? Very simple. You need an integration account because that's the way you can the rep type of repository where you can, or at least it has the repository capability of your mappings. So that's what you need, a basic integration account, and that's why you can store those templates. So you can create a, li a liquid template um, as a means that you kind of, you, you build it yourself, let's say in a notepad or online or somewhere, and then you save it as an, um, a name you provide for a dot liquid, and which you then subsequently can upload. Once you've done that, then you can apply it inside your Logic App. So you need to tie your Logic App to that integration account, and then you have access to your liquid type of templates. And then you can choose to do this JSON to JSON transformation. 
And a better way to just demonstrate it is to talk you through a bit, a little bit of a very simple demo I created for it. So this is my Azure environment. And here you can see that within my integration account I created in the maps, I've added a mapping. And the mapping you can just click upon and then you just select it. And then you can see the liquid template that has been uploaded by me. Very straightforward. Then I switch over to my Logic App. So here's my Logic App. When you do this, in the beginning, and that's what I've done too. So I type my integration card, I created an integration card, edit that liquid template, tied it to my Logic App, and then you might see this in the beginning. This could be a glitch or a bug, but it might it tells you, hey, we're not, you know, it's not done provisioning yet, the integration account, although it has, but it says it here. So once you've done and set this up, you might need a little bit of patience. Furthermore, you can see, um, you know, how the, the information comes in. So let's go over to a successful run. So I just use Postman and here you can see the schema. Here you see the body of the incoming requests and that's being sent to that mapping and here you see the outcome of that mapping so it just alters that you know incoming message to something like this so Stefan W Thomas who order it and you know he's a he's a well-known respected Bistro guru um, and he likes pizza that's what I know so that's why I picked his name and you know this this message uh, that comes in is being translated to the fact that, hey, there's uh, three pizza types and here are the names and quantities. And it's being sent back to it. So that's pretty straightforward what happens. So that's type of the behavior you can see. Now, let's go back to the pizza orders and just point out that, you know, I told you that you need to tie your integration account towards your logic apps and that's what in what logic app and that's what you can see here so select your integration account and that's what you do right here so that's pretty simple and straightforward and i told about liquid so this is where you can find it and here you see some of the basics introduction filters etc so all the information around you know how to create the liquid templates you can find right here so this was kind of a pretty simple, straightforward demo of how you could do JSON to JSON mapping within a Logic App. So you provide an input. You know, I just created an HTTP request, which was sent to it. You know, I used a Postman. Didn't show you that, but I think you all are aware of what Postman is. But you just send a, a payload towards it. You know, in your REST POST call, it comes into the Logic App. It does its transformation. Uh, you have to put in the body basically from the, the request that comes in, at least you have to present that, you know, that kind of payload. It does the mapping and the outcome is sent back. And it's kind of, you know, how you can use that straightforward capability in your Logic App. Now, I'm not the only one who's done this uh, or at least tried this out. Uh, Tovan Houder has tried this earlier. He already tried this out uh, around the announcement a little bit before that. He, uh, he created a blog post and she shows you basically what I showed you as well, you know, this piece of example is basically what I've uh, bored his template and, and uh, a message and it's depicted here. So it kind of tells you how to set this up. There's also documentation now around on uh, on MSDN where you can find it or the Microsoft documentation uh, these days where it's been explained as well. And I think this is a very good setup um, if you want to follow through how you do this. He also explains in another post, uh, in a previous post, where he says, you know, you, there's other ways also to do a little type of basic mapping as well. So definitely check out that post as well. And then you have uh, Sumit Kumar from the, the Pro Integration uh, Product Group that also created a blog around, um, you know, using this um, capability of doing this um, transformation of JSON to JSON, but also how you do JSON to text or XML to JSON or XML to text. So he gives all these types of examples in his blog post. So definitely, if you want to delve in or dive into it more and definitely look into uh, his blog post as well. So if you got any feedback on this um, on this uh, middle of Friday, keep them coming and just, uh, you know, through Twitter or through Gmail and just tell us what topics we want to discuss. And um, well, we're looking, really looking forward to, to present new content to you guys in 2018. 
So again, I'd like to thank Bistook360 for, for hosting uh, Middle Friday. They've done a good job so far um, and keep doing it. Um, they did all the episodes last year. They were like edited and, and hosted by them. And they will continue to support us in this effort also in 2018, combined with all the other uh, um, stuff that um, Bistook360 is doing for the community, including uh, the, the Integrate in London, um, which is probably... If you've seen it all online, it's announced around the beginning of, of June. So very cool um, and very excited. So uh, um, Bistook360, thanks for being a great host. And I'll leave you with the music. <laughs>